Namaste, Taurus, Rising, Sun, Moon, Cross Watcher, um, other interested parties. Maybe you're dating a Taurus or something. This is your biweekly reading for the period of April 1st through April 15th. And I've been beginning um, these readings with a piece of uh, scripture that seems to be connected to quarantine-like times. Just as a reminder that we're going to get through this, and there's a reason why, you know, like the earth is going through a cleansing, much in the same way many of us have. Um, some of you may know that I read primarily for what I call divine beings, or ascended beings, um, you know, very spiritual people, conscious people, awakened people, sacred unions, twin flames. And so, I mean, you can't really tell by my channel anymore because those videos get very few views um, due to something that YouTube has been doing for some time now. Um, so that where my astrological readings get thousands of views, at least the ones that I do for you guys, the earth signs. Um, and, uh, you know, so you can't really tell who my, what my primary focus is anymore. You would think it was astrological readings. Um, but yeah, it is for divine beings. And so, you know, for years I've been talking about this sort of thing happening. And I had even marked, you know, 2020 as the time when it was going to happen. I posted recently on my Facebook, a lot of my original viewers, you know, commented that they recall me saying all these things. That it's all prophesized and, you know, which is something that we have to experience. And so it seems to be upon us, um, or at least happening the way I saw it. Uh, back um, when I started in 2016. So, um, yeah, I'd just like to share this with you and hopefully it'll bring some comfort or understanding or clarity or entertainment at least. It is Isaiah 26, 20 through 21. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So it basically just means shut your, and I, I think that newer versions of the Bible, there are over a hundred versions of the Bible and, you know, maybe a thousand translations. Um, even in, the, even in the Bible, it speaks about how the Bible, how the Word, the Scriptures, the Torah, the Quran, whatever it is, is supposed to be translated into um, every language. Like the, the Holy Spirit translated it into every language. That's what the Tower of Babel was about. In any case, um, I, I think in the newer Bibles, it, it pretty plainly says, shut your doors and you know lock yourself in your house until this temporary period has passed which is what many of us are doing right now, except for those that are considered essential workers. And thank you very much if you are among those um, for you know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get past this. It's a temporary time. And um, you know, the sun will, will shine again. We'll be outside again, enjoying the earth. And she will have um, been cleansed in areas where, you know, they've been dealing with this for a while. They've already seen a change in the atmosphere, like cleaner air, cleaner water, and um, animals returning, and new animals being found, new species being discovered amid all of the chaos, you know, and other stuff that's happening. So, anywho, let's get into your reading, Taurus, beginning with what, what cards I have here for you today um, from the Rider Waite deck and overall energy of Major Arcana card zero, the Fool in reverse, and what I did not know is it is atop the Ace of Cups, also in reverse. So this is indicative of a new beginning for you that will be emotionally fulfilling. You'll be very happy with whatever this beginning is. It could be um, getting back together with somebody, like a reconciliation. It could be a new baby, a new home, um, some other sort of abundance that you've been trying to manifest, some brand new path that you're going to be walking, with, you know, which the, um, the fool indicates is coming some opportunity which upon which you know you're going to be able to take action but not yet all three of these cards in reverse indicating there's some sort of delay and i think the delay is what we're, you know with what we're dealing but 
when that's over, very, very speedy. All of a sudden, we're jumping right in with the Knight of Swords. He takes off, like when he gets information or, or um, he has to make a decision or he, he receives word of a decision having been made, he, you know, takes whatever action he feels is appropriate as a consequence of that. And it may be connected to, again, your love life or something emotionally fulfilling for you with the King of Cups being immediately there um, behind the Knight of Swords. The King of Cups is a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. The Knight of Swords is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. The... Uh, Knight of Wands is an Aries, which some of you may be, like in part at least, maybe a Cuspian or something. Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, or someone like into those traits or attributes. And again, this is an emotionally fulfilling moment. New beginning, abundance, love, money, all of the above. And this is a brand new path. So aside from that, we're also... Starting here with the Queen of Spring, who is, again, a Leo, like the Knight of Wands. Um, this is the Queen of Wands. She, too, is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or someone like into those traits or attributes. And she's considered, in the tarot, like the most fertile, both metaphorically and literally. What's interesting is the sign that I, for which I read before you, which is the sign of Aries. I started with them because of their birthdays. Um, they got a couple of cards that indi indicated that they'd be pretty fertile over these next two weeks too. So some of you, maybe this fire is showing up because some of you are dealing with, you know, a fire sign and maybe specifically in Aries. Uh, you're fertile, they're fertile. You guys better be careful if you're not interested in, in you know, interested in bringing forth a life. But again, it's, it's um, fertile in a metaphoric sense and in a literal sense. So if you're not interested in bringing forth a life in a literal sense, you may want to protect yourself. If you um, are, yeah, go for it. And, you know, all the best to you. It's a really good time. And if it's a metaphoric new beginning for you, which... A fertile time for you, which would make sense again with Major Arcana card zero, as well as with the Ace of Cups. You know, it, it's your it's a great opportunity for you to get started on something, and maybe it won't be something that, or maybe it will be something that you won't be able to fully manifest until you know after some of this is eased or is over. But you can get started now, or maybe even at least the planning process now. So aside from that, um, she's often a very uh, you know, a literal person in your life and more specific to that, often a, like a, definitely a female and older and light haired and, you know, maybe a direct fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. And, um, in terms of like those twin flame sort of readings and things I was telling you about, she does represent the divine feminine archetype in the tarot. Um, Good energy, positive energy. She's independent. She's confident. She believes in herself. She's, you know, she's got that fire and she goes for what she wants. And that's what she's all about. Um, terms of work, when she shows up, work should be good. And there may be somebody, maybe again, an actual woman, light haired woman who's, you know, very like um, significant and, um, you know, a facilitator for you, like helping to further you, helping you to find a job or to get a job if you don't have one or helping to move you along if you do or to teach you, you know, the ropes or new things. Love, positive, definitely. Again, she's the divine feminine of the tarot. So um, awesome card. All right. So we're going to hopefully have time to do a spread with these, but we're going to start with these and... Let me put us let me put your overall energy out too so we don't forget what that was about. The fool in reverse. Um did I talk about the fool in reverse? I don't think I did. Well actually I did I I didn't I didn't. I talked about it in the context of the other cards um in terms of newness, new opportunity that may be temporarily on hold. Um but I didn't talk about it in terms of what it means 
isolated and in particular um, aspects of your life. So I do want to mention in terms of work, you could have really, really good ideas that you want to put forward. Um, and you should be more confident about putting them forward. The fool in reverse can indicate that you've been hesitant and like holding back this like, you know, you have something like amazing to share or maybe a talent that the boss doesn't know about or, you know, you could fill in something. You got to have faith in yourself and faith in your ideas. because They could pay off, um, you know, far better than you could have imagined. And you could be like shortchanging yourself by keeping this information of what you're good at, what you're qualified for and how you could be an asset and how, um, you know, you could really be helping in other areas for which they hadn't considered you. Um, you know, you could really be like sliding yourself if you don't put it out there that you're capable. At least, you know, at least consider it like why you have this time. Like maybe I should, um, you know, build upon this other trait that I have or this other talent that I have. You know, they don't know that I can sing and they need a singing person and they don't know that I can dance and a dancing person. They don't know I can type, whatever it is. I can take the notes and, you know, I type a hundred words a minute, what, you know, whatever. Um, put it out there. Get it out there. And in terms of love, <laughs> you could think you want a relationship. Um and then realized maybe, maybe not so much. Maybe I want some freedom more than I want a relationship when the fool in reverse comes up. Now, um, what's interesting now that I think about it is you got all this fire, the knight of wands, the queen of wands, and I just did Aries before you. Aries is ruled by Mars, which entered the sign of Aquarius this week on the 30th. The sign of Aquarius is the sign of freedom and humanitarianism. So that may be affecting you guys, you know, that energy may be affecting you guys where you want your freedom um, and independence. And again, the queen of wands, she can be super independent because she's, you know, she's got it. She's got it together all on her own. Like she doesn't necessarily need help. And a lot of these queens, you know, can be like that. Queen of wands, especially queen of swords, especially. And what I always try to tell people is you got to be like, learn to be interdependent. We don't want to be too independent and we certainly don't want to be codependent. That's toxic. So we got to, you know, a healthy balance in the middle, interdependent, you know, learn to, um, be able to give of yourself and to accept, to receive in return as well and in balance. But this desire, you know, to be free or to be independent and, um, and it may be because of like isolation or whatever. And it's like, okay, I need some time to myself. I need some space to myself. I'm feeling crowded, you know, because we we're, I'm, I'm stir crazy. I'm stuck in the house or, you know, different things like that. They, they could be contributing as well. But um, the idea is if you want to be in a relationship, because it could be interfering in your relationships, whether you're single, like it could be causing you to not meet anybody or not have it go you know, where you want it to go when you do meet somebody because you're just coming off as too independent again, like you're not interested in, in being partnered with somebody. Or if you are partnered, you know, if you are in a committed relationship, but you're, you're supposed to be part of a couple and you sort of want to be on your own, it could be affecting you. OK, um, so with the fool, the idea with the fool in reverse, the idea is to not be a fool if you want love, like you got to make that known too. you got to, you know, the same way I said about your job and you got to explain to them what you're good at. You got to explain to your partner if you're coupled or to your prospects, if you're not, um, you know, make sure that they understand. I, I do want a relationship where I am interested in you. I do like you. Um, I do love you or whatever the case is, be honest, you know, no, no need to lie either. Uh, and you know, just keep it real about what you want or don't want. So they don't make presumptions about you being single. And believe me, as a queen of swords, um, almost all swords, almost all air, like tons of Gemini in my chart, tons of Aquarius in my chart. I, I know how it is. Like people d definitely make presumptions about me and I have to make it clear if I'm interested, you know. So I recommend the same to you. Okay, so the card... Most um, representative of you and your energy over this next two week period is, oh, very nice. The nine of cups upright. So the sign before you, they had the nine of 
wands as their first card. And I told them that that meant that they were in this process of manifesting, you know, this very positive energy of manifesting and they're guided to keep going, like not to let whatever is coming at them to inhibit them or stop them from their progress. They're, you know, like on the cusp of this manifestation. And for you, it's even more so with the nine of cups, it's like a yes card from the minor arcana. And especially as it relates to love, you had a yes, no question or whatever. The answer is yes, or will be yes. If you haven't asked the question yet, um, when you do, it will, the answer will be yes. And, um, in terms of manifesting, it is like your dreams are coming true. Your wishes are being granted. Your prayers are being answered. It's kind of like the star in the tarot, which represents the sign of Aquarius that I was just talking about. But, um, you know, it's, it's minor arcana and it's of the cups or water element. Um, I think that's enough that can be said about, you know, that I've said about that so I can try to, like I said, move along and give you guys another spread too. So the card, um, representing like surrounding energy. So it could be your energy too, but also it could be that of coworkers or close friends or family. Romantic partner is the 10 of wands. Some of you feeling like you got too much on your plate. Maybe too much going on right now. Like, how am I going to balance all these things, hold all these, keep all these things going, pay all these bills, take care of all these issues in the short amount of time. Like every company that I deal with, every vendor, every um, creditor or whatever, they've all reduced their hours and their staff and their days. And, you know, I only got so much time to try to get them on the phone how am I going to handle all this stuff? You know, I'm just giving you some examples of like what people are dealing with and what this might represent. Just like carrying a load that you're not sure you can continue to bear. It's about being, feeling burdened, um, by other people and things and, or burdensome upon somebody else. In either case, we need balance. We need 50, 50. And it may be connected to some, for some of you to, again, this love and romance, um, meaning of the fool, you know, you want to be independent. So like you're taking everything on and it, there's, there's no balance there. I just thought about how we saw the King of Cups too, because he actually represents, which I didn't mention, he actually represents when he's upright like that, healthy, balanced, masculine and feminine energy. So we, we're all like, all souls are androgynous at the soul level, right? All people are androgynous at the soul level. We all have a masculine and feminine inside and just most of us, you know, are slightly more one than the other, but we can keep it, um, you know, working in a harmonious way. But the King of Cups, when he's upright in the tower, what he represents is like this really healthy, balanced uh, energy and all that comes with it. So like where the feminine is considered to be maybe more emotional He's not afraid of his emotions. He can share his emotions. He knows he's aware that he has them, but they're sort of like in check and he understands them. He gets and he gets them. He's not aware, afraid to show them. He's just cool with them. And then he's also got his like logical and authoritative side, um, you know, with his more heavily masculine side, which like when you think of it in terms of the sign of Scorpio, for example, they too are ruled by Mars, like the sign of Aries. And Mars is the masculine planet of love, for one thing. But it's also the planet of aggression and action. And so he's got all of that, like, rolled up into one just perfectly balanced person, whether it's male or female, you know, uh, even though it's a king. Sometimes a ten of swords, oh, ten of swords, ten of wands rather can be about being too successful too. Like just having so much to do because you, you just continue to um, be offered things to do and to take things on because you're so good at it. Or maybe in the scheme of what's happening right now, for example, you're a doctor or you're, um, you're a nurse or um, even if you're a grocery store um, worker, cashier or whatever, you you know, you work at a store, you got a stock. These people, all these people are of tremendous um, importance right now, you know, whatever capacity. So it could be that like you're, you're tired, you know, you're just heavily relied upon literally by like the, the world right now. 
So that could be what's going on with some of you too. Um, although Taurians tend to be like um, very often like in the financial field, you know, like um, an accountant, uh, something having to do with math. I talked about this before when you, with you, you know, you guys reading once. Um, anyway, so it could be any of those things. Some of you might just like need some rest and you just need to chill and, you know, take a break and have some time for yourself and stuff like that. And maybe that's why, again, why you're craving your independence from other people. Um, alternatively, alternatively, this could be somebody around you that they're bogged down, they're not around, and maybe you, you know, either need help from them and or you feel um, like a burden upon them. Um, your work and finance over the next two weeks. Very nice. Okay. The four of wands. The nine of cups and the four of wands. A lot of you are doing pretty well for yourselves, it would seem. Um, so this does mean that things are you know, going um, pretty well in the work sector. Can't really complain. But it's like one of those things where you still have to... Um, I guess, and especially crossing the 10 of wands too, you still have to remember, like, like keep up the good work. Like you don't say, okay, like I made it. And then you slack off and, you know, um, and fall off. You have to keep up the work, you know, to continue your success. Yes, you've earned it. Yes, you, you know, you deserve like praise and kudos and celebration, especially again, if you're particularly essential right now and, you know, you're, you've been, pulling it off and the world is counting on you and you're you're one of our heroes and stuff you know you deserve every ounce of praise and and money you know raises and bonuses whatever you get hazard pay you deserve all of it but at the same time you got to keep it up right um would be with the four of wands me like you don't slack off um if you have time to if you're able to take a break you you know have some pto or something then Maybe if this is you also who feels that they're carrying a heavy load, a burden that's getting to be too much to bear, then maybe you want to take a, you know, some, some time off to a day or however that works you know, at the company you work for. Also in terms of finances in general, whether you uh, work for a living or not, you know, these things, um, this area should be good too. And if, it, if it's not already, it should be like getting a whole lot better over this period of two weeks. But, and you know, the money is coming as a result of um, some work of yours. So even if it's not labor, it could be something that you, you know, you know, like work in terms of what you've done for the universe, what you've done for humanity. And the universe is paying you off. So it's not like... Um, not like, you know, I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> as long as you get the abundance, especially like money, the material things and stuff like that. As long as you get it, you don't necessarily care, care from where it's coming or why it's coming. But um, it's because like you deserve it. You earned it. And even if it's like, for example, that stimulus money, let's just say now I've read um, as much of the bill and all that stuff as I was able to, uh, you know, stomach and stand in, in a sitting and I found that people on Social Security are going to get it. People um, on public assistance or welfare, whatever, you know, it goes by different terms, I guess, in different states, qualify also. And so you might say, like, oh, we didn't work. Yeah. Um, people, you know, but you, you did. <laughs> people um, who have already filed their taxes, they, you know, this, for this year, they have your information, they, you're going to get it. And well, it's like up to a certain amount of money, up to a certain income. I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars. And then, um, people that didn't file, there was some sort of mechanism for you too, as long as you fall within the parameters. And so like, where's that money coming from? It's coming from taxes that, first of all, the government runs on taxes, on tax money that we've paid, you know, over the time. So even if you're not working this year, you got laid off or whatever, you've still put into that pot, you know, then that when, when the government gives you some sort of social, um, help like social security, they're not doing you a favor. We, people work for that. And then you, you know, so you're being rewarded and this is like front loading, um, it's like giving you an advance 
on taxes that you didn't pay yet that they know that they would ultimately con collect from the citizens of the country. So that's what they're giving. And so this can be that too. Long story short. <laughs> um, your love and relationship. The emperor in reverse. Okay, so um, this might be an older, some of you may be dealing like with an older person or somebody who's different from you in the sense that you're super organized and they're not or vice versa. And um, maybe that was difficult for you before. And you're like finding a way to try to get it figured out. Or maybe it's like it's, that's what's burdening you or it is burdening, burdening you now. Like how am I, how are we going to do this? But with the other cards, it definitely looks possible. Um, well, at least with this nine of cups that is crossing, it definitely looks possible. Some of you could find yourself now, just now, um, for the first time falling for somebody who's perhaps older than you. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to be attracted to you because of what I was saying about Taurians. Like you're often, you know, like in a financial field or something like that, but whether you are or not, you have this very grounded and, um, even though you can be stubborn, there's like patience about you, um, which is difficult to explain, but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And also, um, you're very methodical and like committed and planning. Like the earth signs are, are true workers, you know, um, they, they do their stuff. They don't slack off. They do their jobs and they, they complete them and they, you can count on them. They're dependable. They're practical. You know what I mean? So that's a, that's what about you to which they're attracted, your intelligence, the way you carry yourself, the way you finish what you start and all those things. And so even though there may be an age difference or a spiritual maturity level, emotional maturity level, or even perhaps a maturity level in terms of age and stuff, um, this is something that could potentially still work out for you. If you um, find yourself like overwhelmed by, you know, that honeymoon phase, like the sparks that are flying in the beginning, you know, those are, those are temporary too, you know? So you got to ask yourself before you, especially if you're feeling this way, that you'd rather be independent. Like don't play around with your own feelings or another person's. You got to ask yourself, how am I going to be um, when the sparks aren't flying that way? You know, if you, if, if you feel, like I said, if you're wondering about it, about the relationship, then ask yourself now before you get like too deep into it. Um, would I be interested without all the, the spark and stuff? Would I be able to be in this? Or do I want to be on my own? Do I want to be independent? And then be honest with yourself. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. What, I'm not sure what time it is, but I want to try to look at some other cards. Although I feel like I may not have done a good job. <laughs> of being as fast as I wanted to be. For the last one, I just did advice with these cards. Maybe I'll do that again. And even with just doing advice, um, their reading was like 40 minutes. I'm like, no. I wanted to make it like no more than a half hour. Like 20 minutes would be ideal. And then it's like, well, why do you keep doing so many spreads and so many cards? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I like to give people full confirmation of what I've been saying. Prove that it was that it was correct. Um, so now we come to the two of fire. You've come into your own new partnerships or contracts continue to move forward. And you see, we're still in this same element of fire. And up right behind that is Major Arcana Card 3, the Empress. What did I say? You are going to be particularly fertile, metaphorically and literally, 
over the next two weeks. Here's the reconfirmation of that. That's why I do the extra cards. Um, the Empress represents the sign of Taurus. <laughs> as well as Libra and Gemini, all the signs that are ruled by Venus, right? Venus is your ruler. So Taurus and Libra, um, you know, immediately ruled by Venus. Gemini, um, well, Venus is like the original ruler of Gemini, the esoteric ruler of Gemini. So that's how we fit in. Anywho, time to hop into action. Use your natural creativity and to bring forth prosperity and success in your life. This is your energy, your element. And that's the last one that's upright. So a lot of you, with these two cards being at the forefront, like to bear, in, involved in partnerships, familial, friendship, romantic, business, that are going to be particularly fruitful, even if that means, again, you just using that, um, you know, earth sign flair that you have, that Taurian flair that you have, to plan things out for when you can actually put them into action. And further to that, for the masculine archetype out there, the three of summer. This can also be about fertility and children. It can be about reconciliation, getting back in touch with friends that you hadn't spoken to or, you know, um, Family members too, social, being social in some sort of way, even if it means online because you have to, you know, maintain your distance from people and all that kind of stuff. You have an exciting reason to celebrate, such as an engagement, wedding, graduation, or birth announcement. Remember to cherish those you love. For the, <laughs> for the feminine, it is another major arcana card, zero. It's called the dreamer here. It's still the fool though. You are starting a new adventure. Run free and take a leap of faith. Again, that's why I do the cards. Um, masculine, four of winter, four of swords. Remember I said some of you may need a break, a day off or something if you're able to you know, manage it, if you got it to take. Thoroughly think things through before making a decision. It can also be about that. Continuing to over overanalyze isn't going to get you any closer to a resolution, but meditation and prayer will bring you the answers you seek. The four of winter can also be about the need for a break, whether it's a break from your job, a break from life in general. You just want it like Calgon, take me away, a break from your relationships. You know, they're becoming too much. You're feeling smothered, whatever it is you want to break. Um, to the extent that it can be about planning a vacation. Like I can't go now, but let me start looking into when I can go. Let me start planning now in that very Taurian or earth sign way um, for when I'm able to do it. And lastly, more of your own energy. The Princess of Autumn, or Page of Pentacles. Cheerful, reliable, intelligent, and mischievous. A Taurus, or perhaps another air, um, earth sign with which you're dealing. A Virgo, or a Capricorn, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. A wonderful opportunity related to your work or education, such as a promotion, a scholarship, is coming your way. Seize this chance to learn something exciting or to start a more rewarding and uplifting career. I hope you guys have enjoyed your reading. I will be back in two weeks, um, like um, April, I almost said August, <laughs> um, April 15th or 16th, God willing. Namaste.